Hey, welcome. Uh, this evening, I'm going to show you with a voiceover a video how to do my hinging process from start to finish. So, let's get to it. Here you see all the parts laid out. I have all the hinges, the horns, the wire for the hinge pins, and uh, all the flaps done. You'll need two identical flaps, or excuse me, elevators. Your stabilizer's uh, got a concave in it, as I'll show you at the end. And that groove is what makes the pocket hinge actually work so good. The leading edge of the elevator is recessed into the trailing edge of the stabilizer. I always like to dry fit things to make sure things are lined up and sand and adjust any anything that uh, doesn't quite look right make sure the fits are good mark the center of the stabilizer take a square and draw a straight line for alignment at a later time This line will aid you in my alignment method that I'll show at a later time with the uh, layout lines on the glass. Separate your hinge pieces so you know I have all the right parts. There's two hinges per elevator and two hinges that go on the control horn. This way everything is set off the trailing edge 3 sixteenths of an inch. You'll need a drill, 8 inch drill, to drill on the center line two holes for the bearings for the uh, elevator horn. These are Jim Lee hand drills. I really like them. You can control them really well. I always take my finger and mark how deep I've drilled the hole to make sure that it's long enough for the tang. The next step in the operation is to broach the round hole square. Take your hinge off and force the square peg into the round hole, leaving a broached square hole. Run it all the way down to the trailing edge so that when you're putting it together, it'll fit together easily. Do it both sides. The next operation requires a little bit of sighting. You want to make sure that the horn is in a parallel line with the trailing edge. It might be slightly crooked, 
and you'll have to adjust it until it's perfect. You can see here that it's out of alignment. And we're twisting it till it's parallel with the uh, center line of the trailing edge. These adjustments are have to go throughout the uh, the hinging process. While tedious, it's not difficult, but it is necessary to make a good, loose, free hinge line. Take your drill and adjust as needed. After adjusting the horn, make sure that it's parallel and moves freely. This is a very important step for a, for a free hinge line. Make sure that the horn itself allows for a full range of travel. Take your control surface and figure out where the hinges are going to go. I always uh, take a pen and mark them. I try to space it out so that there's one on the tip and one in the middle between the horn because the horn acts as a hinge. So you actually have three hinge points. Transfer those marks from one elevator to the other. Do not mark the second pull for the horn. And I'll show you why when we get to that step. This is a tool that I made that recesses the hinge pin 3 16 of an inch and cuts the 8 inch groove for the thickness of the hinge. Hold the tool square as seen here. Gently in an up and down motion, holding the tool square, sand the slot for the hinge until the bottom of the tool bottoms out against the leading edge of the stabilizer. The better that you make that tool, the nicer it'll cut the slot. And I'm still working on an automated tool that I can do it by machine, but I haven't figured that out yet. Your finished hinge pocket should look like this. The reason for this is it sets the hinge pin back in the flap half the thickness, 3 16 of an inch. You're going to need the filler blocks. And you're going to need your wire. Bend the wire over at a 90 degree angle. And measure the distance of the hinge pocket. I try to go all the way across. Cut it off. Insert the wire in the uh, hinge. I use a 16th inch drill.
for the tang to be recessed into the wood. You could force it in, but drilling it makes it much cleaner. Take the hinge and place it in the hinge pocket, making sure that the wire is in a parallel line to the trailing edge. force it down into the wood. What holds this together are those filler blocks that I showed. As such. The next part can be pretty tricky. I use thin set CA to do this and I hold it at an angle running away from the hinge at a drop of CA. If you hold it the other way you'll glue your filler block to the hinge and you'll have to cut it apart. So use gravity in your favor. Trim it off. Repeat the process on the other side and the remaining hinges. After getting both sides glued on, take your X-Acto knife and carve it close. I then take a sanding block and finish off those edges. Be careful to make them blend with the elevator so they don't look out of place. Fine sandpaper on a popsicle stick works good too. as seen here. Take your time. This is where small details make a big difference. Make sure that the hinge is free. I always move them back and forth and adjust if I happen to get some CA into the pocket of the hinge. While this process is a little more difficult than blade hinges, I believe it, it yields a better hinge job. Repeat this process three more times until you have four hinges in the stabilizer. Next, you're going to need to plot out where your horn goes. I put the horn on the center line. And I make a mark with a felt tip pen where the horn needs to be bent. I normally do this by eye. I don't really need a ruler. And I get them relatively close. The reason for this felt tip line is for the actual bending. The bending tool that I use is a KNS bender. And I put it in a drill press vise. I set that line right where the the bend is going to be right on the stationary pin. This will give you a closer way to bend than just guessing.
Bend this wire into a 90 degree. If I over bend it, I bend it back. Follow that process to the other side. After bending both sides of the horn, place the horn in its place and mark where the tangs are going to go. I then take a 332nd drill bit and drill the hole. Forgive me guys, I think the camera work is bad. <laughs> Here we go. Drill the hole down through, trying to keep it at a 90 degrees to the trailing edge. I next drill in approximately 3 sixteenths of an inch parallel to the trailing edge for the recess of the horn. Try to keep things square. Using the finger method I take my scalpel and I relieve that piece of wood out of the elevator. That leaves a nice pocket for the horn to sit in. Pick it right out. And take the drill bit and kind of use it as a file to pick out any of the stray pieces of wood that might be stuck in there. Now we're going to put the first side together. It's a little difficult the, the first time putting it together. So if it becomes difficult, take the horn off, put the horn in first, and then put the whole assembly back on. Repeat for the other side. Same sequence. Hey, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the uh, the hinging video. This is for that continental project that I'm doing. And uh, these pocket hinges. I have another I have another pocket hinge uh, that I want to show you. This will will better explain how the pocket hinges work. So we're going to try to get a close up here. I want you to keep an eye on the, the hinge point there, how it ro rotates through the arc. And that way there's zero hinge gap. There's no hinge gap whatsoever here. And these are the, the freest tinges going. Now this one here, the uh, the Continental, I just finished. I just finished it up. And I'm going to have to take some time 
to adjust and cut because as you can see they don't flop but once once I had relieved the uh, the hinge sides this will flop just like that one so make sure you like subscribe and share my videos I'm hoping that uh, I can make this channel grow I'd like to get at least a thousand subscribers. There's all kind of people that have millions of subscribers that show stupid stuff. And I'm hoping that I can pass on some of what I learned in the control line uh, building process uh, to you. So, till I see you again, fair winds, tight lines. See ya!